His face has been punched, his wetsuit's half ripped off, and he's been attacked by a guy in the surf. <laughs> can't do that to you, mate. And Derek, where does he think he is? Brother. Harry's has had run-ins with the same body surfer before. He likes to have arguments, and I had to defuse a situation where he was going to get punched out by a board rider. Yeah, just to get that guy on the surfboard, guys, we need to keep this area clear, please. But the body surfer won't move. He would just be saying, oh, that, that's not for me, after he has been told multiple times. Where is he now? He's right in the middle of the flags. Oh, he's blowing up. He's blowing up. Threw his hands in the air. Let me just do a PA. Yeah, just once again to the fiberglass board riders, foam board riders, hand plane uses any surf craft that propels you across the top of water is considered a surf craft. You must remain on the outside of the surf craft prohibited sign. It's the third time the body surfer has been told to move out of the flags. Yeah, I'll go down. Dealing with this body surfer is like a challenge for me now. I have to find the best way and best possible outcome so he walks away happy, he's not angry, he's not emotional, he doesn't want to attack me. Fiberglass boards, foam boards, hand boards, anything that propels you across the top of water and is not motorised, you must be on the outside of the surf craft sign. Disobeying the regulatory act, penalties may apply. He's quite focused on removing everyone else with the same category. <laughs> He's got a board rider nearly ran him over. We have had a conversation with this gentleman on, on many occasions down here. Some people believe that they have a right to their area and he wants his own buffer zone. Can the gentleman with a blue cap and handboard, can you please come back into shore to have a chat with me? Yes. How are you? So, I was so, trying to keep us close to the way. I know, so what, what happens, right? So you're considered a surf craft user. All right, so that's a, that's a surf craft, is it? Yeah, so you're the same as a board rider. Yeah, that's what I was trying okay, to so, keep right on the edge. Like that, that, that crazy guy on that fiberglass board took the head off the You're disobeying a regulatory act, but we've been down this path on many occasions. I've stopped the guy from wanting to build you. Okay, so. Let's just make this the end, all right, okay, please, no okay? He was non-confrontational. He wanted to know what the rules were. Outside. Yeah, that's what I'm So please, like, just... He said, oh, yeah, someone has actually told me this before. So it was a real positive outcome, and two parties can work together better now. Yeah. All right, we'll take care, matey. Got an angry man down south. Hmm? What is it? And then we saw a local surfer actually getting, not chased by this guy, but the guy was coming towards him quite fast. This guy was walking backwards quite fast as well. Once they got up onto the promenade and they started to walk backwards towards the lifeguard tower, all of a sudden they were both out of sight and that's when you start to get a little bit more worried. You never really know what can happen in these situations and you always think the worst. Instinct kicks in, protect the public, get them inside, close the door, and then take it from there. I just slammed the door, which has an automatic lock, so he was locked out. Patient was safe. The danger was outside, and then we can call the police and move on. Hi, Sharon. My name's Clint Coyne from the Bondi Lifeguards. How are you? We've just had a couple people being threatened. Local surfer Steve had never seen the man until just a few moments ago. He's like that, right? Yeah. That's God, mate. I was just walking out the beach, and um, this guy was swearing at me, and um, just tried to mind my, my own business, walked past him and he kept swearing, so I so just said, 
good on you. And then he just chased me up the beach. For us down here, we see a lot of really interesting characters. More times than not, they go as quick as they come. This guy was clearly affected by either drugs and or alcohol, and he was just in a rage. Yeah, I just want to go down and speak to the police. It's not really good having a guy like that down the beach. And, you know, we've got a job to do watching the water, and we don't want it to snowball to taking our resources off doing our job. Hi, you guys. Hello. That's an awesome story. As police monitor the man, Steve explains the unprovoked attack. About halfway down the front towards there, he got up to me, so I turned at him and I considered for a second putting the board down. I went, no, no, I'll just get back to safety. Okay. And then I backed off, backed off. And as he's got real close to me, he's lunged and kicked me and I just fended it. And then they had the door open and they said, quick, get in. And I pulled straight in. Despite the presence of police, the man tries to confront Steve again. I'm going to go before he gets up here because he'll lose his shit again. This time, a welcoming party awaits his arrival. Yeah, that is what they do all the time. See how it goes. Right? Hey, 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 hey. Here they go. Who are you? Hey. Come on, then. Come on, do it. Come on, just your lives. Hey. Sweet. Hey. These situations are always quite a bummer, you know, because this guy clearly wasn't himself. I don't know how he got to the stage he was at, but looking at him, he was just someone who needed a lot of help. So hopefully, as bad as this situation is, he can get help from it and he can clean himself up and um, come back down the beach one day and enjoy it for what it is, not cause any drama. The man was charged at Bondi Police Station and is scheduled to appear in court. Just another normal day at Bondi. <laughs> Come back to shore. Hey. The men's swimming styles reveal a lot about their abilities. It's incredibly frustrating as a lifeguard to have people ignore your advice, which is directed at their own safety. Come on. Hey! Come in! Come on! Get out of the water. Yeah, mate, we're calling you from in there, mate. You just got to get out, mate, straight out. Yeah, yeah. Same, mate, the beach is closed. And you're like, don't go back in the water. Okay, don't go back in the water. Hey, what do you mean, why? The beach is closed. Yeah. What do you mean, just us? Yeah, yeah, no, you two. No one else. Yeah, yeah, you two, no more. Despite repeated advice, the men, both from the UK, don't want to hear the message. Mate, you, hey, you, you were that you close were, to the ground out there. Yeah, you were. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. Mate. You noticed where you started? You started here and you ended up over yeah, I thought it was normal. That's uh, not normal, mate. Okay. You were seconds from disaster, trust us. We see it every day and you were... You were I was, I was in trouble in there. I, was, like, I felt I was in... Well, why didn't you come? We were yelling at you. Because we were in the heat. I was talking to my mate. Mate. Honestly. Mate. You're not fine, mate. Just take our advice. Thanks, man. Thanks for you. People turn around and they, and they come in and they say they were fine. It's just frustrating. Oh, out the back. Yeah. We've got all the dangerous current signage the whole way along the beach. And then this guy goes in right in front of the signs. He's battling, mate. He's just... Oh, hands up. He's waving his rear. Yeah, Harry's knows that this guy is in a lot of danger. He's flirting with death. You know, by this stage, we've done 50 PA announcements to warn people, yeah, tempers are flaring. When you have a guy like this that's just gone out past the signs, hasn't even stopped, and just gone in and got himself in a situation, you're going to get upset. You're definitely going to get emotional. Where are you doing? Okay, stay there. Keep your hands down on the board. No, when people go into the water, it's putting other people's lives in danger. You're doing your absolute best. You ain't got a cape and you're trying to save someone. If you look at the drowning stats, a lot of it is in this kind of conditions. Overcast, onshore winds, and very few people around. Have a look, your mate nearly drowned. Okay. Have a look at the signs. Yes. You educated? Yes. You can read those signs. You nearly drowned, mate. How much is your life worth? How much? Oh, I completely understand how Harry's feels. If Harry's wasn't there, certain death. Oh, well, you've got to take oh, some responsibility. You. Have a look at the sign. Thank you. OK, thank OK, you. thank you so much. 
I was quite agitated because you, you, you can see that a young man that looks physically fit is going to drown and go under. And, you know, he, he literally had 10 seconds of his life left. Jake was on the jet ski and I was in the tower and uh, Mario was on the sand. We had a swimmer that was in bad shape and going under and uh, the call was made from Mario to direct uh, Jake to pick up the patient. Jake, Jake, can you come back, please? Come back here, the middle set of flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He started calling Jay on the ski, and um, he wasn't too far from where the swimmers were getting a drift. Jake is having trouble following Mario's directions. Yeah, 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 in front of me. He keeps saying, yeah, yeah. He doesn't know where here is, you know what I mean? Like, he can't say, yeah, yeah. Right here. Lifeguards often use the walkway ramps along the beach to identify their positions. First, second, third, and fourth ramps are key landmarks. Me being in the tower, uh, I thought it was my duty to uh, help direct him as best we can. And uh, I sort of came in over the top and, and tried to help. Jake, if you can just go to... Uh, yeah, yeah, just in front of you there. No, 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 no side, no side of the flag, here. With every passing second, the swimmer gets closer to drowning. Yeah, just tell me where you are. I've been with those people there, sweet. Here, here. Yeah, I said here, here. So he couldn't understand where it was. The problem has already drawn in three lifeguards. Then another. Mario, fourth ramp. You're in front of fourth ramp. Mario's got to learn to go by ramps. Anyway. Mario had said to him a couple of times over the radio, here, 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 and Jake got really confused. You've got to give me a location, Mars, so I know where you are. That's that north side. No, you didn't. I'm being bad the Finally, Jake locates the swimmer. Mario came up to the tower and I said to him, G'day, Mars, how's it going yeah, down there? And uh, he was quite uh, annoyed. Yeah, bro, you, 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 bro. Mate, you... He's really fired up and really angry and uh, just kept going at me. It was actually the one we called. He, yes, he was that one over there. On yeah, the he where he was when I said to him, in front of you there, because he was coming past the flag. No. Yeah, I knew where you were looking, mate. I was looking at it. Ah, uh, whatever. You were saying here, here. You can't say here, here on radio. He doesn't know where here is. Yeah, but no, I'm not, he no, doesn't no. know where you are. I know, but you did the same, and then at the end I said, no, there. I said, on the north on, on the north side. Mate, I said, and then he went to do the rescue. Mate, he was heading down no, this side. No, I don't agree, bro. Well, I don't agree either, because... Yeah, so, whatever. There was no one in this hole. Yeah. Under the circumstances, we were really stressed. We were really under pressure down here, and tempers sort of frayed, and... Uh, you know, I think Mario probably needed to vent, and I was in the firing line, and uh, and then of course, because I was under stress too, I probably vented back. Are you going to be an idiot, or are you going to like try and see? Are you going to going to fire up and get angry, or are you going to work as a team here and say? Yeah, I'm working as a team, bro. Mate, New Year's Day is the most confronting and challenging day on the lifeguard calendar. It's no time for division in the service. You can't say here, here on the radio. It was a fact. Hey, you're right, I'm right with you. I've got people to watch here. If you want to do bro, this, that's I'll you. argue with you outside of work, but mate, we've got a job to do here. Yeah. If you want to carry on like a two year old? I'm not carrying the luggage. You are, mate. You are. Over two years old. The biggest. You have over nothing, mate. Get over it. No, there are actually a team down here, mate. We don't pick each other up on small yeah, little things. No, it's not little things. Mario and Singlets have another nine hours working together before the day will be over. What the f? Man, I don't need these things. 5.30 p.m. and lifeguards are holding on desperately until pack-up time at 7. Earlier in the day, tensions boiled over when Mario and Singlets clashed head-on. You want to carry on like a two-year-old? I'm not carrying the luggage. Oh, you are two years old. The biggest you have nothing, mate. The conflict remains unresolved, but the pair must continue working together. In the tower, Maxi notices two swimmers being swept off the sandbank outside the middle set of flags. There's two out there uh, further out where the jet ski is trying to do that rescue. On the jet ski, Mario is already midway through another rescue. So Singlets leaves his post at the north end to cover. You might have to go for those two if uh, the ski's busy. Yeah, I'm on my way, mate. Yatesy arrives from the middle set of flags on foot. In the swirling rip, bobbing amongst the crowd, these two swimmers could vanish without a trace. 
when we got out there, it actually resembled like, you know, white water rapids. It was, there was so much water moving and there were waves coming from the side and the front. In situations like that, it, it actually gets really dangerous because you can lose a patient quickly too. Finally, Mario arrives on the ski. There's no time for arguments now. Two young patients are safely on Mario's rescue sled. But behind him, a third person is in trouble. Just to the jet skis, right? It's just that lady going under. I took a few of them on the ski, and um, I could see Singlet and Yeti paddling out. When we got out there, I remember just looking around and going, wow, there's just heads everywhere here. Another capsize on the jet ski now could prove fatal. <laughs> There's about 10 rescues going on, out in the water. Further inshore, Yaxi rescues a fourth swimmer. The overloaded jet ski has already capsized today. Singlets backs up Mario so it doesn't happen again. My priority was to try and alleviate Mario's situation and, and get him clear so he could drive away and, uh, and take some weight off the side of the jet ski. Yeah, it was crazy. There was just heads everywhere. We didn't really know who we were going for. We just, when we get out there, we just kind of grab everyone, really. It was crazy. It's kind of, it was a mass rescue sort of thing, so... It's just full on. It's chaos out there. It was a team effort, but Singlets and Mario are yet to resolve their argument from earlier in the day. Maxi starts packing up the mountain of gear set out that morning. But given the numbers of people still on the beach, it may be premature. Up in the tower, Mario and Singlets have some unfinished business. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. Hi. <laughs> 2015. Job done. Done. Come seven o'clock, we, we sort of crossed paths and uh, we glanced looks at each other and then just gave each other a, a big hug. Come on, baby, you know I still love you. Hey, you know I still love you. And you know, it was all okay. Hey, mate, you might be a good swimmer, but look how many people there is. Like, huh? You might, you might be a good swimmer, there's just that many people. Good swimmer or not, just being there encourages other people to swim in the dangerous current. Just go over. I told you over here to go in the flags. How many times do you need to be told? I can tell you to go in the shore. You're not allowed to swim here. Yeah, Bondi jet ski to Central. Oh, yeah, Jeff. That bloke, I've told him about 300 times to come in. Jesse, I reckon forget about him, matey. I, you know, I don't think it's really a worry. A short time later, the man arrives at the tower. I'm so sorry. And it's like, thank you so much for coming up. We do get a lot of difficult customers and you know, we've such a big crowd, 35 to 40,000 people down on the beach. Uh, it, you know, it's inevitable that things like this are going to happen. You know, I backed Jess, I did apologise to the guy. So what happened, Jess? Well, I was over near the flags, you know, and then he was swimming by himself, and I go, look, mate, I go, you, you can swim decent, you know? Look, there's thousands of people in the water. I can't keep dealing with you. Help us out, you know? We're here, yeah, you know? Been on the jet ski for the last four hours. Good swimmers should always lead by example. I knew Jess is doing his best out there. He's pulled in probably 30 or 40 people alone in the last hour. Gonzo's, you know, he's not working today. He's out there having a paddle. You know, he, he's back Jess 100%. He said the guy was an absolute nightmare. On days like this, you know, it's, it's really hard. You, there's so many people on the beach and he's taking up his time trying to get that guy out of the water. And he was just, he was just being a pain in the I've still got probably 6,000 people out there in the water that I've got to watch, so they're my priority right now, not him. He had a really split lip. 
like properly split. Uh, now, can we have police presence down at the Bondi Lifeguard Tower? Tell me what happened. His face has been punched, his wetsuit's half ripped off, and he's been attacked by a guy in the surf. The first thing that I wanted to do, I, I wanted to fix his lip, but then he wanted to press charges, so we went into detective role. You do, you just move this, yeah, that's poke yeah. up. Eve saw what happened. She had a good description of the attacker. You can't miss him, he's got only one booty. Really long hair like mine. Oh, oh, really? Okay. What I saw is that they were fighting and the guy was trying to drown him. He was like smashing him in the face. Do you have a blue board? Coloured board. Coloured board? Yeah, I don't know. And the booty's on his right foot. Yeah. That's him. There he is, there he is, he's riding this way. I don't know how many guys would be out here with one booty. That's me. I'm looking around, he's the only guy with one booty, long hair, exactly what you said. That's him going under now. Oh, his okay. foot went up in the air. See the booty on his foot? He's the only one with one booty. Oh, OK, yeah. See him? Yeah. I just didn't like going down to the beach with a whole brigade of coppers and calling surfers in. I'm going to try and get this guy's attention on the megaphone when I get the chance so he can clear himself or he's the guy that did it, one or the other. I just want to get this over and done with. I've got to think about this. I've never had to do an announcement like this before. Just, uh, if that surfer out there, um, you know what we're going on about, mate. If you could come in, oi. He's catching a wave now. He might be coming in. Right on, mate. That's that wave there. See that? He was the only one that had the long hair and the boot. I don't know how you can be adamant that we had the right guy. Can't do that to you, mate. And Derek, where does he think he is? Brother. Him? I'm sick of it. He's a kook. I thought we had the right guy until we kind of went down to the beach and I don't know, I just got this feeling that what if it wasn't the guy? He's getting arrested for doing nothing. Anything you say or do, like a report, you don't have to say or do anything if you don't want to. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. Anything you say or do, like a report, I can use that recording as evidence the... in court. You come with me and we'll just see if it's a guy. It may or may not be, I'm not sure. Eve saw exactly what happened. I thought she would be the one who can identify this person. Well, you still want to come and talk to me. No, it wasn't me. Why? Do I have to Yes, you're under arrest. They don't want you to be down there, do they? Would that be right? No. Is it him? Not him? OK. That's you know, right. he didn't have a lot of surfboard. Hey, guys. Sorry. The whole, if you listen to us, the whole idea of this, she's the witness, she says it's not him. OK? Now, the okay. bottom of the board was white, okay. that's for sure. Oh, he had really, really long hair. And I said, he's sure? He said, yeah, it's not the guy. But I've <laughs> gone too far and the coppers had to arrest this bloke. They've got to basically take him up and make sure that he's definitely not the bloke. They do that with ID and they do that with their little black books. So is he gone now? So he had one booty on, yeah, we didn't find him. I know. No. We thought he'd be still in the water. But he was smart. He's left the vicinity as quickly as possible, as you would if you're, you had half a brain. You learn a lesson how to deal with things like this every time. Good luck. Thank you. All right, let's go. Let's get stitched up.